Soilless and Hydroponics Growing, Unit 5. Hydroponics Defined. Soilless growing is nearly synonymous with hydroponics, though technically soilless could apply to growing with a medium like shredded bark. But for the purposes of this unit, we're treating soilless and hydroponics as the same thing. Hydroponics means growing plants without soil, using water as the medium that holds the nutrients necessary for plant growth. There are any number of ways to accomplish hydroponic growing. So the term really embraces a huge array of possibilities, including indoor and outdoor growing, trays or troughs, water only using a root support system, such as expanded clay pellets or mineral wool, and much more. For instance, here's a photograph of a simple hydroponic system. Hydroponics doesn't have to be complicated, as you can see from this picture. This is a very simple hydroponic growing system a crocus bulb in a glass. Bulbs such as crocus contain sufficient nutrients to put out leaves and flower without additional inputs. But if nutrients were added to the water, this would qualify as a full hydroponic system. This is a little more involved hydroponic system. This hydroponic system is growing plants in screen houses outdoors. This is different from greenhouse growing. The prevailing climate has an effect. The screens um, help protect the plants from insects and other potential pests such as rabbits and deer, um, while being much less expensive than putting up a greenhouse. Um, they can also be configured as shade houses for crops requiring less light or for those crops that we might want to shade for some reason, such as blanching. What are some of the positive aspects of hydroponic growing? Hydroponics can be done outdoors, can be done in greenhouses, can be done indoors under lights. It's suited to the production of a wide variety of crops. Perhaps one of the more important aspects is it can be used on land that isn't suitable for crop production in soil, such as paved or gravel covered areas, and it can cost significantly less to get started than the remediation of such areas would cost. Hydroponics can also be done vertically, requiring very little ground space. Hydroponic systems can be built from off the shelf or recycled parts. Weeds are generally not a problem in most hydroponic systems. And because hydroponic systems are self-contained, pollution from runoff isn't an issue because there is no runoff. And even though hydroponic systems are based on water, they actually use much less water than traditional outdoor growing or even traditional greenhouse growing. So what are maybe some of the negative aspects? Well, they do require some mechanical ability to set up if you get more complicated than putting a crocus bulb in a glass. By definition, they do require the availability of water, but then so does all growing of plants. Most systems make extensive use of non-sustainable products such as plastic, though recycled plastic could be used. Most systems require electrical power to run the pumps. And setting up larger systems can require a significant investment in both time and money. And finally, most fertilizers for hydroponics are not currently organic or sustainable in nature. So how do we grow plants in water? Well, one way is to use a root holding medium like these expanded clay pellets. These are simply pellets made from clay. They don't really maintain the nutrient levels. They don't do anything other than provide support for the plant roots. 
and let the hydroponic water nutrient solution drain through so that the roots have access to some oxygen. And other root holding systems include uh, mineral or rock wool, lava rock, pea gravel, um, all sorts of systems that don't necessarily require that they be nutrient rich as soil growing wood. Here's another fairly simple hydroponic system. This system just uses bales of straw as the root support system. The hydroponic solution is pumped and drips through, down through the straw, past the root system of the plants. The solution collects on the plastic sheets where it can be reabsorbed by the bales or collected at one end and recirculated. A system such as this might be a little less efficient uh, use of water than some other systems, but it's extremely simple system to set up. Here we see a close up of this straw based system. And you can see running across the top of the bales is that black line. Nutrient solution is pumped down that black line. It then comes out of the smaller tubes you see sticking off the side. And it can drip through the bottom of the black line directly in the top of the bales and then it can go through the other lines to the side of the bales. Extremely simple system and you can see over on the left hand side how the plastic is raised up against the edge of the greenhouse. Basically forms a trough to allow the water to be collected and recycled. Here's a photograph showing hydroponically grown lettuce in a basket using expanded clay pellets as a root support system. And you can see the roots of the lettuce plant protruding from the bottom. Now, if you look at the uh, photograph carefully, you can see that the system basically consists of a large diameter pipe with holes the size of the pots drilled into the pipe and the pots simply sit in those holes. The ledge or ridge around the top of the pot sits on top of the pipe, keeps the pot from falling into the, into the tubing. Water then containing nutrients is run through that pipe and that's how the plants get their nutrients. In fact, in this picture, you can see another pipe inside the larger pipe. And that second pipe inside the larger pipe has holes drilled in it, uh, tiny holes at each one of the locations along the pipe where those pots are placed. And they actually spray the um, nutrient solution over the pot so that the level of uh, nutrient solution in the pipe does not have to be quite so high. Managing hydroponic systems? Well, hydroponic systems can be automated to a great degree. The pumps for water circulation can be set on timers. Water levels, nutrient levels can be monitored electronically. Because conditions are very consistent, i.e. the nutrients that all the plants get, usually the amount of sunlight that all the plants get. Um, the process of managing a crop can be easier than those crops grown in the field. You get more consistent growth and the times for production can be more consistent, allowing for a greater degree of planning and cycling of crops so that maximum production can be achieved. Because of the automation and the consistent growing conditions that hydroponic systems have, the systems can be run by fewer workers than a traditional soil-based agriculture for any given crop yield. So it's a very efficient system. Scaling 
and efficiency of hydroponic systems. The systems can be designed to be scalable. That is, you can start small and then add additional capacity as required. Um, though with greenhouse-based systems, the most efficiency is gained by utilizing all the space in a greenhouse at once, since heating and cooling costs remain constant regardless of whether you're using all of the space or one-tenth the space or one-half the space. Um, however, you can start with a single greenhouse or hoop house and add additional hoop houses as required um, and as your market grows. Outdoor systems can be scaled quite easily, but are, of course, at the mercy of the growing system. Um, in northern or temperate climes, you're not going to be producing a lot of stuff hydroponically outdoors in winter. Um, but overall, the systems are quite scalable and quite efficient. Finally, a little additional information. Watch the assigned videos. That's true for all the units, but in this course, in this case, um, the videos cover a wide range of hydroponic setups from large factory type greenhouses to small systems that you can easily build from off the shelf and recycled components. As you watch the videos, pay particular attention to the required infrastructure from greenhouses to computer control systems down to the simplest systems with buckets and hoses. And note the relative efficiency of each system in terms of the manpower and other resources required to make it run, such as electricity and heating and cooling. And finally, listen for the figures given for crop yields compared to traditional farming methods. You may be surprised. I want to say one more thing here about the uh, relative efficiency of each system. The more automated a system is, the more efficient it is in terms of manpower. However, greater degree of automation may require more electricity, um, may require more heating and cooling because the best, most efficient automated systems are done indoors in greenhouses. So that's a thing to watch for as you see all these videos. And that concludes the presentation for Unit 5.